Yeah, superstar Chris. You you smashed them today. Yeah, we uh, we beat my last two uh, uh? strange cases in a row, uh -huh. and they both been dropped. Two in a row in the two criminal row. court. Yeah. Uh, you I should like you should become a lawyer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, tell us what happened in the court. Well, today um, we came to court on time. We filed paperwork uh, to do a statutory declaration at this time. And uh, we didn't realize that it was very low numbers in the courtroom today. So we had to rush in to be seen by the judge. And we made it just in by the skin of our teeth to have the trial go ahead. And uh, as the our lawyer didn't have any paperwork for him to actually do the proceedings in a atypical manner, so what he explained to us is that all he's going to do is to say that there's a lack of evidence, a lack of witness, and that more opportunities to come and be here than not be here. Yeah. yeah. So, so this lawyer said he was appointed yesterday, yesterday at four thirty. Yeah. He had no documentation at no all, documentation. and we asked him for the appointment. And he showed us a letter with a S. Macalista. It was a printed email. A S. Macalista. S. Macalista. That's not been signed. And uh, we asked him if that's a, a proper and lawful appointment. And he yeah. said yes. Yeah. Um, so that's a perfect legal profession for you. So we done a lot of work before the case, isn't it? So yes. you, you could argue this case was one outside the court, or it wasn't one inside. Because we, we were asking the CPS now on both cases yeah. and give us a copy of the information you laid at the magistrate's court to start the proceedings. Yeah. You must file, lay an information, you must lay evidence, you must lay a statement of truth or affidavit. It must be considered by the magistrate or justice of the peace. It must be sealed by the court and then it must be served on you. Did you get any such items on any case ever in your life? No. And in you and me, <laughs> we've had now over a hundred cases against us in different uh, situ uh, situations. And, and we've never been served with any proper court issued documents. Yeah. So we also were told um, that the CPS on the previous case, um, they actually surrendered out of court. They said, uh, notice of discontinuance, um, and that's the, where is it, damn, um, notice of discontinuance, okay, they, move your hand off there, that's the CPS, there we go, there's a the CPS logo, um, and they went on to say that, uh, should you and your client wish to apply for costs incurred in respect of these proceedings, you may make written requests to the Justice's Chief's Executive. It is not necessary to apply for the proceedings to be continued in order to apply for your costs. In other words, Chris, they're giving you, uh, <laughs> it's an open check. Yeah. yeah. Well, you didn't cash your check. <laughs> yeah. Because you're waiting on the other cases. Yeah. And then we had from Barnet, you, you've been evicted what, six times? Five or six times? Six, uh, five, above over five times. And all your stuff stolen in each occasion. Several times. Yeah. And all these people keep saying they have court orders. Yes. And this is what Barnet Court said. Um, thank you for your. I am sorry. I cannot find any trace of this court having uh, possession proceedings against you. I mean, so you were you were living in the family home yeah. at uh, 180 Churchill Road, yeah. and at the time you were looking about your education and work arrangements and trying to get your... Uh... I was having difficulty finding employment elsewhere, so I moved into my own place to stay in my situation. And as soon as I got 
a job as soon as I got an interview and was accepted for work is the day that me and my family got evicted. Yeah, and of course uh, evicted, not uh, illegally evicted illegally or you could evicted. say deprived. Yeah, deprived. Because according to the law, you've never been really evicted. Yeah. So 180 Church Road is still your lawful home. Yeah. Um, now, we've made uh, numerous requests to the CPS for the case today. Yeah. for information what they laid yeah. and they sent you some bump and said this is all you're entitled to yeah they sent us a bundle and within the bundle which wasn't actually pages weren't fully a4 they sent us a5 pages as well stuff you can't even read fine print yeah and also um the lawyer acting within our case threw down and before that the lawyer acting on our case uh, was very, very, very uh, quick to do a guilty plea and not yeah, they, put it They were bullying dress. you to plead guilty, isn't yeah. it? They said you would get a lesser sentence if you plead guilty. Yeah, they were really pushing yeah. for a guilty plea, even though today we managed to get it, the charges dropped. So, But you, you, they're trying to tell you to plead guilty when there is no claim laid against you at all. Yes. And uh, when we asked the previous lawyer, and pushed her, what did she do? She quit. She came into court and said she's unable to act. Yeah. So she got professional embarrassment. Yeah. Um, and today, we also got news that the CPS had already applied to quit the case. Yeah. Um, on, uh, on the 8th of July, which is four days ago, Yes. Um, and they never told you. Yes. The court didn't tell you. The CPS didn't tell you. I mean, so why do you think they didn't tell you? They applied to drop the case. And well, what, what, what could that? What could be the explanation? Well, as the last few cases have been dropped against me, I think uh, this proceeding shows shown that. Uh, we did our due diligence to get this one dropped as well because no matter how this case would have played out today it was only going to end one way right so by not telling you do you feel or i feel they left you open to risk that means maybe you won't turn up um or something of that nature and then they would nail you. They would make up some kind of order against you that you failed to... To be honest, I don't know what would happen, you know. But when we walked in there, they had a big proceeding go going on, even though we weren't late. I'm not sure about that, you know. What? When we went there and walked in, what happened? I'm not sure about that, you know. Okay. But when we walked in, what was the setup? Uh, we walked in and they were very surprised to see that we turned up. Right. And they had to reset the proceedings. Or what did the lady say? Uncle Jenna, you know, not saying nothing on camera, you know, Jenna. Don't say it. No, we we both heard. It. Well, I'll say it for you. She yeah. said, Oh, um, what's the word she used? No, I'm not telling you, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 I know. Oh, no, this changes everything. Uh, Isn't it? Uh, this changes uh, everything. Uh, Just because you turned up. I don't think he wants to answer that question. Huh? I don't think he wants to answer that question. But the thing is, we won the case. Ah, so good. now he can answer whatever he likes. Oh, okay. Yeah? This was a neutral sitting there having for breakfast. I've just summarised yeah. that. I mean, he got off, but he did steal the wallet, but he got off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So when we went to uh, file your statement, when before we went in. Yeah. So we filed a statement. You must always file your damn statement a statute and get it, get it stamped by the court because otherwise there is no way to prove you filed it. So this is um, um, a proper document because you've been told you're in court, Chris, and so many cases, so many occasions. Have you ever received in any of these proceedings anything with a court seal on it 
uh, from my local knowledge now.